John chapter 14, verse 25, you'll find these words. John 14, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I want you now to reach out and catch your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm fired up. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, I'm fired up. Tell somebody one more time, neighbor, I'm fired up. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Before I go any further, I want to just share with you our mission statement and, and, and our vision for, for our ministry. We're going to email it to everyone so that you have it and you can rehearse it because I don't ever want you to misunderstand who we are and what our purpose is. I want you to understand why God has entrusted much to our care because he knows he can count on us to do his mission, his purpose in, in the earth. Our mission statement is simple. It says, to seek and to save those that are lost and to train those that are saved to be servants and ambassadors of Jesus Christ. In other words, we seek and to save those that are lost and then we train them to seek and to save those that are lost. How do we accomplish this? We invite people to experience the love corner. We offer a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We provide a genuine environment of Christian love. We promote intentional faith development. We prepare the people of God for service to those in the church, in the community, and throughout the world. What is our vision? The Church of the Living God, known as the Love Corner, has been planted in the Champaign-Urbana area as a beacon of life giving light, empowered by the Holy Spirit to impart the love of Jesus Christ. We are mandated by God to do good to everyone we encounter, but especially those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ and that he has assigned to our care. We assist in leading the people of God to a life in spiritually, socially, physically, and economically that that's economically fulfilling. We are called to specifically serve the youth. We are to help them understand the spiritual complexities of the time. We are to teach them to know, love, and follow Jesus Christ. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are to prepare our youth to be righteous leaders in the earth. Furthermore, we are responsible for providing, for providing our youth with a safe, stimulating, and satisfying alternative to the sinful offers of the world. I'm going to email it to you so that you'll understand. Our job is to love people. Turn to somebody and say, I love you. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody that you don't like and tell them I love you. <laughs> Amen. We have to make sure that we love people, that we're nice, even if they're not nice. Turn to someone and say, be nice. Yeah, even if they're not nice, you don't know what folks have been through. And please stop saying they don't know what I've been through. Listen, you've been through the storm and rain, but Jesus is with you, and it makes the difference. He makes the difference. One of the greatest privileges of being a child of God is having the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle John tells us in 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, being Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. The one thing we really want to make sure of is that the thing that's inside of us is holy. Amen? And there's some things about us, and I'm just going to kind of touch on some things. There's some things about us that the Lord wants to deliver us from. He wants us to obey him as he delivers us from some things that don't look like him and don't sound like him and, don't, and, and, and in ways that we don't behave like him. All of us have those moments. Am I, am I talking to anybody here? You have those moments. I'm not saying you're not saved because you are saved. You've been redeemed by the Lamb of God, but there's something on the inside of you when people say something to you the wrong way when they do the wrong thing sometimes you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed or so you say and the wrong stuff comes out of you that's what you have to give to God and you have to trust God for his spirit to deliver you from the things that are binding you 
According to the Bible, there are three primary ways that God reveals himself to mankind. Number one, he reveals himself as God the Father who created us and rules over us. Number two, he reveals himself as God the Son who became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and died for us. When we start dealing with the gospel, we deal with the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I like to take it sometimes a little bit further, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension of Christ and the intervention of Christ. We would not be who we were if Jesus was not interceding on our behalf. You and I have been a mess. Even though we have grabbed hold of the message, we're still a mess. But Jesus Christ, he looks at us in our mess and says, Father, I want you just, just overlook that. Let me, I got that. Let me take care of that. Don't, don't listen. Don't blow them away right now. Are you with me? Are you with me? This is what the Bible, the Bible tells us that, that, and Jesus in number three, he reveals himself as God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus lives in me. Yeah, let somebody know it's the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's the Spirit of God. He lives in me. He lives in me. He lives in me. Come on, tell yourself, he lives in me. Speak over yourself. He lives in me. He lives in me. Some stuff inside of me. He's got to get out of me, but he lives in me. He lives in me. This is what Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so that unclean spirit that's inside of me doesn't have to be inside of me. I'm not talking like a representative Ammons. If, you know, if we don't vote, we have the power to vote. We have the authority to vote. We have the opportunity to vote. But, but no one's going to make you vote. You have to understand the Holy Ghost is there for you, but the Holy Ghost is not going to make you accept him. The Holy Ghost dwells in each of us as a flame. Listen to me carefully. He dwells in each of us as a flame that can either grow and become a devouring fire or he can remain a small flicker or he can actually be quenched till he cannot be seen or experienced at all. So you have the Holy Ghost, but what you do with the Holy Spirit is totally up to you. Just being in church doesn't stroke your fire. Just hearing the preaching of the gospel does not add any flame or fuel to your fire. You can be in a place where miracles happen and never experience a miracle. You can be where the presence of God is and the power of God is moving and you still not be moved. Are you all listening to me? I'm telling you right now, it's up to you how the spirit of God is going to work in you the story is told of a man and his wife and some other church friends that went to a brother and sister's house for fellowship after church well after they ate they went outside to sing around the fire but there was one problem even though there was a fire pit and a bunch of wood in the pit there was no fire no matter how long they looked at the pit and thought about the fire that should have been in the pit they wished that there was fire in the pit. Nothing happened. Nobody got warm. No marshmallows were roasted. There were no sparks flying until they put fire to the wood that was in the pit. Now I'm talking to somebody here today because you're talking about what you don't have. And God says if you don't have it, that's nobody's fault but your own because I've given you every single thing that you need. So they put fire there, they put fire on the wood. But even then, the fire was minimal. It wasn't until they put some kindling on the wood and they poured some starter fluid all over the wood that the fire was able to ignite the wood. The same is true for you and me. When we receive Jesus Christ as our savior, we do receive the Holy Ghost, but we have to feed the fire. We have to add kindling to the fire. We have to pour spiritual oil all over ourselves for the fire to really burn. The fire of God in your soul and my soul requires the kindling of the word of God that is saturated by the oil of prayer and fasting and praise and worship. I have nothing to give you and you've got nothing to give me but if we spend time in the presence of God, he's going to give us every single thing that we need and then when my fire hooks up with your fire, Bam! We got an explosion. Hallelujah. 
In the church today, the Holy Spirit is displayed in a variety of ways amongst the believers. I'm not here to validate or to dispel any expression of the Holy Spirit. That's not my assignment. What I'd like to do is to show other ways, to show you some ways, according to the word of God, that the Holy Spirit works in the lives of the servants of Jesus Christ. Turn to somebody and say, the Spirit of God is alive in me. Yeah, and I'm telling you, he's about to break you up. Are you with me? He's about to fire you up. Are you all listening to me? Number one, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit helps us. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 26, that the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. You see, we all have problems. Some of our issues are minor and require very little to overcome. If you have a head cold, that's a little thing. If you go out and your car doesn't start, that's a little thing. It might mean probably that you, your battery is dead. Okay, it's hot outside. And if you haven't checked your battery, your battery could go out. Now, at the moment, it may seem major, but in reality, that is a little thing. You remember the other day when I was telling you, a few weeks ago, I was telling you my air went out in my vehicle. Now, this is very interesting because I'm, I've gone up to AutoZone to find out I'm listening. I can't hear anything. I'm thinking that my compressor is gone. So I go up to AutoZone. I find out it is. I don't have a whole lot of time. I am hot. Somebody say hot. Because it was during the hot time. And I'm looking at all these folks with their windows down. I'm saying, Lord, please bless these people. Bless these people. Can you bless me while you're blessing them? Because we are all hot. Amen. So Daryl comes back and he has this guy that, that, that I know, he's looking at his truck. And I said, well, Daryl, when, when he finished looking at your truck, will you tell him that my air is out in my truck too? And Daryl says, well, you want me to take it right now? I love a man that wants to do something right now. You know what I mean? He said, you want to take it right now? I said, yeah, I want to take it right now. How much is it going to cost me? He said, he's going to charge you $20 to look at it. This is a great guy. I'll let you know who he is if you want to. Now, I heard he curses, okay? Let me say that. I heard he curses. I've been around him for, for about an hour or two. He didn't curse around me, but I heard he curses. So I'm just giving you that full warning, okay? So Daryl took it up there. Maybe 15 minutes later, he comes back and he says, well, you got air. I said, I got air? He said, yeah, you got air. It's good, too. It's good. Do I owe him anything? Else? No, just the $20. That's all. That's Are you all listening? I rode around two weeks. Ha. Get with me. When, when, it, when it looked like it only took about two minutes for a person who knew what to do to fix the problem. Are you with me? I'm trying to get you to know you walking around here broke, busted, and disgusted. And the Holy Ghost says, well, when you get ready, I know exactly how to fix you. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, so, the, so the Holy Ghost, he, he helps our in infirmities. Because sometimes, now watch this, sometimes we have issues that seem almost too much to bear. Like the death of someone you deeply love, or maybe you've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Paul tells us in our text that we can count on the Holy Spirit to help us in our weaknesses, our sicknesses, our frailties, and our pain. Let me give you the scripture from Psalm 103. Psalm 103, beginning at verse number one. Psalm 103. Now, this is what, this is what the psalmist says. He says, bless the Lord. See, when you're going through a hard place, the first thing you should do, stop all that worrying. Because if you knew what to do, you would have already done it. You don't know what to do. So what you want to do, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. And this is what he says. And forget not all his benefits. Listen, if God blessed me before, why can't he bless me again? Why can't he fix this thing if he fixed that thing? He goes on to say, who forgiveth all of our iniquities, who healeth, listen to this, all of our diseases. You know what you've been through. You knew what you were doing. You remember what you did before you came here. You know what you did after you got here. The Bible says that God forgives us of all of our iniquities. All we've got to do is say, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And don't try to play God. The Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 4, who redeemeth my life, thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all of those that are oppressed. 
I'm telling you right now, I used to be bound, but today I'm free. I used to be down, but today I'm up. I used to be on the bottom, but today I'm on the top. I used to be broke, but today I prosper. And I'm in health even as my soul prospers. So the Holy Spirit helps us. But I'm telling you right now, if you, if, if you, don't, if you don't put your time in with the Holy Spirit... Don't come here looking for me to give you a scripture. You should have 10 scriptures before you even get here. You should be telling folks about the information that God has fed to you last Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I thought Tuesday couldn't get any better. But Wednesday, I went back to the word again and God blessed me again. And the only thing I could do then was get down on my knees. And I began to cry out to God. And I mean for real, I start crying. I don't know what came over me. I just start thinking about how good God is to me how good God has blessed me I began to think and suddenly something on the inside of me broke and I began to cry differently before I was crying because I was messed up and now I'm crying because I'm blessed up hallelujah amen find you a, a quiet spot find you a closet I don't care stop looking at your furniture and, and, and you in there taking off your shoes before you walk on your carpet you ought to get some different kind of carpet how you listen you should be able to wear shoes on your own carpet if, if, if your children get it they gonna wear their shoes on your carpet Find you a spot and, 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 and map it out as your own spot. And, and you talk to God in that spot. And, you, and when you are burning, you don't get up out of that spot until the Lord tells you, I got you. Until the Lord tells you, I heard you. Until the Lord says, I want you to just listen to me. Until the Lord says, I'm going to correct everything on the inside of you that's broken. I'm fixing everything that the devil tried to kill you with. I'm taking it all back in the name of Jesus. And when you come to church, I'm not going to have to preach you happy. You're going to come up in here happy. Hallelujah. Number two, the Holy Spirit comforts us. This is an age of great discomfort from within and without. And too often, folks are looking for help in all the wrong places. We got folks turning to things like alcohol and drugs, both legal and illegal. And one is not any better than the other. Well, maybe one is a little better than the other. You know what I mean? One is at least legal, but it still kills you. Then we, then we turn to gambling and we turn to promiscuous sex and excessive spending and food. And, 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 and sometimes we, I don't mean to say this, some folks are so bad off that they've embraced Donald Trump as their savior. I, I don't talk politics a lot, but I'm trying to tell you, you got one savior and his name is not Donald Trump. I want you to understand that, okay? Now you can do whatever you want to do, but if you think he's going to save you, you, uh-uh, let me move on, let me move on. He's a comforter. He's my comforter. None of those things that I mentioned or people will provide the spiritual comfort we need. This is what the Bible says in John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. He says this, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you, somebody say forever. So that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is going to abide with me. Look at your neighbor. Quickly, don't play Okay, see, you think your neighbor is the only one with the Holy Spirit. But the scripture says that he's going to abide with, with me. I'm not knocking him being with you. I'm glad he's with you. But listen to me. I need him for myself. When I'm hurting, you being healed does not help me. This is what he said in John 14, 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. People from all walks of life are trying to ignore God or go around God to find comfort. When in reality, God through the Holy Ghost is our only true comfort. So he helps us from the inside out and he comforts us. Number three, he teaches us. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Look at our text again. John 14, 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you, teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit teaches us 
And then he exposes us to the small print of sin. Because, see, you have embraced some things like it's going to make you better. But in reality, when you don't embrace the things that God has embraced, it really makes you bitter. So the Holy Ghost exposes the small print of sin. Watch this. There is a product on the market, and it's called Miralax. For those suffering from, don't tell anybody, constipation. Okay? Every now and then, as good as you look here, every now and then you got a little issue. Okay? Praise the Lord. The advertisement for the product says, don't wait to feel great. Don't wait to feel great. So when you look at the product, in your mind you're saying, man, my stomach is all knotted up and I need to go and I can't go and it's a fight. And, and, and don't tell anybody. It's not you. It's your cousin. But you know it every now and then. And so if you were constipated, you would think that that product would quickly help you. But if you take a closer look, you will see these words in very small print. Generally produces a bowel movement in one to three days. Okay, I'm hurting right now. You understand what I mean? I need something to happen right now. You're talking about one to three. And what they're saying is, we're not misleading people. We're saying, don't wait. If you take our product now, in one to three days, you'll feel great. Come on, are you, are, you, are you with me? When it comes to, to misleading contracts or sin, it's what you don't know that will crush you. The story is told of a rich man who was dying, but he, re, he was determined that he was going to take his wealth with him. So he told his wife to get his money together and put it in a sack, and, and he said, hang the sack on the rafters in the attic. So that when, when I get ready to leave here, on my way up, I'm just going to grab the sack and go be with the Lord. Well, his wife did what she asked him to do, and eventually the man died. The wife raced to the attic after he died just to find that the stack of money was still there. She said to herself, I knew I should have put that stack of money in the basement. Brothers and sisters, too many people look at eternity like the couple in our, in our story. Folks don't know the word of God, and so often they're not familiar with the plan of God. If you belong to God, it doesn't matter whether the money's in the attic or in the basement. You're not taking the money with you, all right? <laughs> That's why. For, for the believer, the Holy Spirit serves as our teacher, spiritual counselor, and he highlights the difference between sin and its consequences and righteousness and its rewards so that we can have the assurance that if we choose properly, we will have life over death. Amen. In essence, the Holy Spirit teaches us, enlightens us, and then empowers us to do what God has already told us to do. This is what Paul says. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. How many folks here are not ashamed of the gospel? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Okay, so when church is over, I want you to tell three people that you love Jesus. Unless you're ashamed. Amen. Say something about Jesus. Well, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, you might be paying your money at the counter. Oh, how I love Jesus. How much do I owe you? Oh, oh ha, ha, I love Jesus. Did I give you a right amount? Ooh, because he first loved me. <laughs> you might get so happy, you may tell him, keep the change. I just lost some folks today. <laughs> Amen. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power. So what is, what, is God, what is he saying to us? He's saying that the Holy Spirit empowers us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not able to do that on my own. If I think too much, it's not going to happen. But if I say, Spirit of the living God, I want you to live in me. I want you to live through me. I want somebody to know that I serve you. And God, now the Spirit said, that's what I've been waiting for. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, then to the Greek. 
Remember, we're saved by Jesus Christ and empowered by the, and commissioned by the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can boldly tell others that Jesus is the way. I love the third chapter of St. John, the third chapter of Acts. I love the third chapter of Acts because in that passage, Peter and John are used as instruments to heal a man who was lame from his mother's womb. But how they did it was extraordinary. The Bible would have us to know that at the ninth hour, it says in verse number one of Acts 3, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Now you heard Elder Moore talking about prayer, and prayer is a very real part of who we are. We are not praying enough, and even when we pray, we're not praying together enough. On, when, before Pentecost, the children of Israel uh, and, and the, apostles, the, the, the disciples and the apostles and 120 were told to tarry in an upper room and wait for 10 days. Don't go anywhere. Go on a lock-in for 10 days because you need to know who I am and you need to know who your brothers and your sisters are. We've got to get to the place where we come into the sanctuary to pray. Somebody say pray. Now, you don't have to say anything. Nobody's going to say anything to you. There's going to be a, a nice little music playing. You just come in and we release into this atmosphere the spirit of prayer. We're going to talk to God in this atmosphere about what you're talking about, what's on your mind. Maybe God will show you something that's on my mind and you can pray for that too. You can be in here five minutes, ten minutes on Wednesdays from 12 to 1245. At the end of the prayer meeting, if you need special prayer, something. Someone will pray with you in the evening from five to six. You're just coming in. You may only get off of work. I only got 10 minutes. Come on. We need your 10 minutes worth of worship in prayer. And then at six o'clock, if you want someone to pray for you, they will. But they were going to the temple for nothing more than to pray. Turn to somebody and tell them prayer changes things. So watch this. The Bible says there was a certain lame man at his mother's womb who they had carried there daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, who asked them of alms when they entered in. Now, I really like this because you can be in an arena where things are beautiful and still be ugly. Are you all praying with me? We can come into a sanctuary that really looks like God has done something, and he has. But everybody here does not feel the same way. Some of you came in here broken. Some of you came in here depressed and despondent. And now when folks ask you how you're doing, you'll tell them, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. And some folks are. Um, Sir Elders Polk's son was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the, where the, tur where the tornado came through and, 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 and the hurricane came through and just wiped out everything. And he was almost gone. But somebody came through with a boat. The water was coming up to his head. But when he got in that boat, he was able to go to safety. So when she says, I'm blessed and highly favored, she means I'm blessed and highly favored. But if you ask her that any time, that's what she's going to tell you. Because whether I'm doing well or not doing so well, no matter what, I'm still blessed and highly favored. Can I get somebody to help me praise him in this house? And so the Bible says that when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he's going, he's outside of the temple asking people to help him because they're getting ready to go into prayer. He asked them for alms or for some help. Fastening in their eyes upon him, the Bible says Peter said these words. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk now what I really like about this story is that Jesus in the flesh was not there Peter did not have any silver he didn't have any gold he didn't have any stocks or any bonds but what he had was the Holy Ghost he said that's all I got but that's all that you need in the name of Jesus rise up and walk 
And so this morning I've come to tell you, I've come to tell you it's time for you to get up. I want you to reach out because the Bible says that he grabbed the man by the hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones restrained strength. And this man began leaping and walking and praising God as he went into the temple. I want you right now, I don't know what you're going through, but right now I want you to just touch your neighbor. I just want you to touch him and say, rise up and walk. I just want you to touch him and say, get up. I just want you to touch him and say, God is here. God is moving. God is blessing. God is healing. God is delivering in the name of Jesus. Now we could really stop right there. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. Because after this man who had been lame from his mother's womb got up. Listen to me. The people that were there, thousands of people, knew the man. Knew he had been born lame from his mother's womb. Knew the man was messed up. Because the man could not see. Many of the folks probably walked by him like they didn't see him. Like they didn't notice him. But when that man received his sight. When that man received his limbs. When that man's body became whole. The Bible tells us that those men wanted to know. I know you were blind. I mean, I, mean, I know you were lame. But now you're able to walk. And now you're able to leap. And now you're able to celebrate. I want to know what happened when they began to ask the question Peter took the opportunity Peter says it's not about me you saw me lay my hands on him you heard what I said but if you see this man walking it's not because of me it's because of the spirit of God that's alive on the inside of me the Bible tells me that 5,000 men received Jesus Christ as their Savior that day. Brothers and sisters, we are here to seek and to save those that are lost. Can I?